Okay, so um, in this video, I'm basically going to be doing a uh, good little overview of Russell's logical theory of types of Bertrand Russell. Um, there's no one book that has this. We have his Principles of Mathematics, um, along with you know some other books of his. So I'm not really referring to one book, but just his theory of his theory of theory of logical types. So turning to what I've written on the board here. Um, <clears throat> so to kind of give some context as to what this is about or what this is referring to, we are talking about philosophy of mathematics as well as logic. So, um, Gottlob Frege, him and Gottlob Frege did have, they had a little bit of a correspondence. Now they, both Frege and Russell had a philosophy of mathematics which is called logicism. Logicism is the argument that all of mathematics is reducible to logic. Um, thus, and they do that through set theory. Mostly. From Cantor. <coughs> as well as others. Um, Ernst Zermelo had a similar thing with, that Frege did. Um, or, yeah, it was Zermelo and, um, they kind of did something with the Dedekind piano axioms. Uh, I forget about the whole Dedekind piano stuff, but I'm just kind of trying to focus on Russell, mostly. Um, <clears throat> so, what is logicism? The business of philosophy of, 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 of mathematics is to, I guess, ontologically and epistemologically and through, I guess, also, also, also talking about philosophy of language, figure out what number is. Um, <clears throat> what um, number is. Like, Plato, for instance. Plato did have a philosophy of mathematics, and his philosophy of mathematics was that we have this abstract theory of forms where if I have a t a two things, then that's the form of two, instantiating this. Um, so, that's the whole thing, you know, that's basically Plato's theory of everything was his theory of forms, they have a form, form, of, form, form of the good, the form of beauty, and so on, you know, um, so, Plato had one, Aristotle had one, um, a, 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 Phil Math, I mean, and, you know, um, Mill had one, Kant had one, you know, lots of these philosophers, you know, we don't, we don't always think about them, with 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 respect to their philosophy of mathematics, but Frege and Russell are the two basic figures which kind of brought on this theory of logicism. Now that's uh, some kind of can can possibly be a reducibility relation, where you know um, functions of mathematics can be reduced to functions of to functions of, of logic or the number three can be reduced to something along these lines. And I'll explain this type and level stuff here in a bit. Um, so, we can um, sort of reduce truths of mathematics to truths of logic. That's what this is saying. Now, Frege, through stuff like the, the Griff Shift and the Brulagen, um, by that I mean the in the uh, Grunlagen, I mean the the foundations of arithmetic, which um, is this book here, which I do plan on doing a section by section go through of this. Um, not quite ready to, ready to be doing that yet, but I plan on doing that sooner rather than rather than later. Um, so. Frege, now I do have a couple videos on Frege's logicism that I, that I did way back when, and um, at some point I will explain Frege, but Frege did, Frege and Russell, they have created systems, systems, or logical systems through set, through set theory and also through other things that they've kind of done, in, in a way which will show how mathematical truths can be reduced to logical truths. 
Um, personally, in the in the philosophy of of, of of mathematics, I agree with this. Um, there are, you know, there are neo neo Fergians and there's neo logicists, um, you know, within the last 10, 20 years that have been trying to re to revive the, the 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 projects of Russell and Frege of trying to show through a axiomatic sy system and through all that no, all that notation as to how mathematical truths can be reduced to logical to logical truths. Um, so Russell and Alfred North Alf Alfred North Whitehead wrote this big huge book which is called Princip Principia Mathematica and that is a huge three volume book which is mostly all notation and I'm trying to get through it but it's all literally all logic all logical not all all logical no no notation and what they were doing is trying to create this system showing that all that all all, all mathematical truths can be reduced to logical truths now Frege's system Russell and Frege had had a bit of a correspondence and Russell wrote wrote, wrote Frege and said oh shit your your basic law 5 is messed up or so, or so, something like that um you know he kind of I forget exactly exactly what he says it's in um I have it somewhere um he said something about Frege's system and I believe it was on it was around this, this basic law 5 um and then Russell, in his book *The Principles of Mathematics*, as well as in his book with Whitehead, *Principia Math Mathematica*, as well as other works, we have Russell's theory of of logical types. Now, Frege also had a theory of of logical types, but Frege's stuff didn't have this in it, which I'll explain in a bit. Okay, so first of all, I have to explain Russell's Russell's paradox. Or the Barber paradox, which um, it's kind of a hard one, kind of a hard one to, to understand. Um, well, think of it, th think of it this way: we have a city of people who don't shave themselves, and we have a barber who shaves everybody in that in that in that in that uh, town. So everybody that is a town of people who don't shave themselves. So the barber obviously shaves them, but the barber is a part of that town. So who shaves the well, who shaves the barber? That's the that that's the big question. So it's a big class of all classes. You know that's a big issue with that, and we have um, a huge class or huge set of individuals of which kind of hard to explain. Um, of which the I guess the it is where the set is a member of itself. That's, a, I guess, a good way to say it. Um, that's kind of hard to explain. Because you can kind of see how this is paradoxical. Um, as to, we have this town where people who don't shave themselves, but the barber is a part of that town. So who shaves the barber? That's a big question, a big, big paradox. Um, and... That's the kind of the whole thing. We have a set, or a class, of, mem of members of which the set of which it is a member of itself, and that's a big problem. That's a big problem, which is Russell's, Russell's paradox. So Russell gave gave something which is called the vicious circle pr principle. Now Frege's basic law five had to do with the extension of predicates over objects. Um, now, what what is extension? If we have a predicate or a concept, the extension of that um, is two concrete objects. We have the little distinction between intention and extension. In, in, intention is intention towards meaning or sense. Um, that's from Frege, this, this whole sense and reference thing, uh, which I'm going to do a video on here soon, possibly today. Um, where extension, an extension of a, of, a, of a predicate or a concept is over concrete objects. Now, that had to do with Frege's basic, basic Law 5. 
and Russell, you know, basically corresponded with with, with Frega saying something was wrong with this. Um, now we also have Frega's you know, humus principle, which I have talked about in other in videos that I made quite a while ago. Um, I should have ta I should have talked about that, but that's kind of different issues. But it does it does really it does relate to this very very well. So so, what is a type? Next thing, what is a type? Um, a type. They have this type theory. Frege had types, but Frege didn't didn't have levels. Um, so this type is a logical theory, theory of types, and what it does is showing how numbers can be can be reduced to logic. So we have here the empty set, which is of course the corresponds to the number zero. And we have the type zero, which is a type of individuals, which is corresponds to the number one. Type one, the classes of individuals. Thus we have the number two. Thus we can or number um, or other numbers and such. Um, you know, so we have two here here. Type two, the classes of classes of of the classes of classes of individuals. Type three, the classes of classes of classes. Of, indiv of individuals, and type four, type six, and on and on and on and on and on. So we can have basically now. There's there's better ways to to, to explain how this corresponds to numbers. Hopefully, my explaining as to how type zero and one kind of correspond to numbers one and two and three and such. Hopefully, that kind of gets you there. There's, I guess my my hope would be that um, you know. Either Russell or somebody who is a who is a scholar on Russell is being read, um, you know, so that you know this can make some kind of you know sense because what I'm what I'm doing here can't possibly, I guess, talking about types and the way I'm doing it can't possibly um, can't possibly um, live up to the way Russell does it or the way many scholars on Russell have done it. This is more of a brief overview and there are lots of things out there which can show how how all these types correspond to um, numerical um, um, entities which are through this are showing it showing it to be logical now keep in mind this is this kind of all that this whole thing has been refuted via a guy named Kurt Kurt Girdle which I'll explain at the end of this end of this video um, Thus, we have a level, which is what Russell did. Um, Frege had types. Frege, Frege didn't have levels. Um, level zero, objects, objects only. Level one, objects and, and predicates. Level two, objects, and, objects and predicates of predicates. Level three, objects and, and predicates of predicates of predicates, and so on and so on. So that's the whole theory of types as to how numbers are logical entities. So we can see how kind of set theory can be a logical way of sh how of showing how the link between logic and and mathematics is a is a reducible relation. So, what is the vicious circle pr principle? Russell talked about the the vicious circle principle as Having no extension of, of predicates over over individuals and thus no no de no definition. So Frege and his basic and his basic basic law five. Frege did like and he did espouse the ex extension of predicates over objects in his logicist theory of mathematics and and, and logic. However, via Russell's Russell's paradox, Russell says that we can't have that. So we have, you know, like our numbers. We don't we don't we don't have an extension of the through Russell. We don't have the extension of two over, say, two markers. You know, we don't have that. Um, so this is kind of like the problem of definition, where if you if you ask me what the word meaning is, and I'll say, well, meaning is such and such. And then you ask me 
well, what does such and such mean? And then I'll give you another definition, and then, and then, and then you'll ask me, what does, well, what does that mean? Intentional definition, which will go in a circle indefinitely. Um, so, the whole thing is here, like, that even though we do have this mathematical objects being reducible to logical objects, um, we aren't going to, I guess, talk about as to how the number 2 extends to certain objects, or how any number or any or any predicate extends towards individuals. Now, there's, there is there is the issue as to whether a, a number is a predicate. I don't I don't recall as to what they said about that. I think that there was an issue as to whether that was a predicate. Um, but through this, we're not going to we're we're not going to we're not going to talk about numbers as predicates, um, and we're not going to talk about them as extending over individuals. This is more of an intentional thing. So we have the, the distinction between, pre, between pre, predicativity and impredicativity. Impre, predicativity and impredicativity. So predicativity is, I guess, the way to explain that is to um, have, we kind of have a really distinct and meaningful idea of what of what something predicative is. So, to be Italian, that is very predicative, and it it corresponds to something very, 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 very concrete. We know what it means to be Italian. And there's no dispute about that. Versus the impredicativity or or impredicative impredicative de definitions. The classic example to be to be a good a good a good general. Or to be a good speller, or you know something, it, we have to have you know some more definition as to what it means to be a good general. And then you give me another an, another definition, and thus we have a, a similar similar issue. So we don't have basic Frege is ba basic law five. We don't have impredictivity. We can, we only have predictivity. So what does this have to do with the liar paradox? The liar paradox is we have, and this is often associated with Pinocchio, um, the uh, liar paradox corresponds to the issue of whether we have predictivity or impredictivity. So what is the liar paradox? We have the, par the paradox of, this is, again, this is often, you know, linked to um, Pinocchio, where if Pinocchio... Um, you know, uh, Pinocchio when he when he lies, his nose grows. Um, so we have the somebody saying the statement, "I am lying." So that's a big issue in itself because you, if he's if he says, "I am lying," can you see this one? I am lying. Now, he could be lying. If he really is lying when he's saying this, he's being truthful, so thus this is wrong. Or he could be not lying, and this would be false either way. So you're kind of just... It's, well, it's what you call a dilemma. You're basically damned if you do, damned if you don't kind of situation. It's a lose-lose thing. No matter what you look at this as, it's always going to be wrong or have some kind of problem with that. So that's why we stick to predicativity. Thus we don't we don't do mathematics or logic in predictively. We don't do things this way, we do things this way, where we have distinct ideas of what of what we're talking about. That's the, the, the this is the way in which we do mathematics and logic. So through this theory of types this is called for, for, from Russell a ramified hierarchy of types or um, or of um, mathematics, and that's because the problems Frege had are being pretty much dealt with. You know, uh, Fre or 
Russell's, Russell's correspondence with, with Frega, and, you know, Russell's like, well, hey, your base, your, your, uh, basic law 5 is pretty, pretty, um, you know, wrong, and there's some big issues, issues with that. Um, and, uh, so, but, Frega's program, his load assistic program, and then we have Russell's program with, um, Whitehead, his Principia Ma Mathematica, all were logicists um, trying to show how mathematical objects or, 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 ma or mathematical truths are reducible to logical objects or logical truths. So, after Russell and Frege, we had a kind of a um, philosophy of mathematics, which is called, for, for, it's called formalism. And there's a guy named David Hilbert, which I do have a video about, which gets a lot of views for some reason. Like, that's one of my most viewed videos, and I don't know why. <laughs> um, that had, it had the theory called form formalism, and it's about, I forget entire, the whole thing about it, but it's about axiomatizing all of mathematics, to having an axiomatic system of mathematics, and this has to do with language as well, and I forget how. Um, but it's kind of, and also having the branch of metamathematics, but Frege system, Russell system, and Russell with, with Whitehead, as well as, as well as Hilbert, they all have a system which they are trying to prove through, through that, through the, through the very own, the, the very own system. You know, um, And uh, we got a guy named Kurt Girdle. Kurt Girdle. Um, who came along with his incompleteness theorems. He had two of them. Um, where, now, there's a book by Ernest Nagel who goes very in-depth into and kind of helps helps you to understand both of the um, incompleteness theorems of Kurt of Kurt Girdle. Um and um, pretty much what this is without all the logical, you know, um, esoteric stuff. What that is is that you can't prove a system through the very own the, the, the very own system. So if you have Hilbert's axiomatization, the, his if you have Hilbert's axiomatized ma mathematics. Um, you know, um, that which, which you have a whole system of mathematics where you are trying to prove that, prove that system as complete through that own, that, uh, that very own system. And Frege had the same thing. He had his Lotus s system where you would have to prove it through its very own system. Same with, same with Russell and Whitehead's Principia Mathematica. You would have to prove that through itself. So you can't axiomatize all of mathematics and be able to, to, to prove it out. Thus we have kind of a bleak outlook for formalists and logicists. But, um, so all of this stuff has kind of been refuted, but then we have neo logicists of today, people like Crispin Wright, I think is a recent one, um, people like him, that's, they're kind of trying to take up, take what Frege and Russell left, you know, the, the ruins of Frege and Russell and possibly even Hilbert's programs, and bring it back. <laughs> that's what they've been trying to, trying to do, so, um, if you, if you have a question or you think I've left, I've left something out, um, in this little overview of uh, Russell's, Russell's theory of, 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 of logical types, comment comment below because when the reason the reason I do this is to, I guess, help my own view as well as help anybody who possibly can gain any help from this. Um, so also, if you have if you have, if you have a question, anything, any of you want to say that is constructive, please please comment comment below because whenever you comment, I I get an email, and if your email is or if your comment is constructive, then I will always respond, so thank you.